Good morning. All right. So today we're going to go over something called recursive rules, recursive formulas. Again, this is something you have uh, already done in the past to recognize other types of formulas from linear to exponential. Uh, but today we're going to have a little more explicit formalities going forward. Again, the format is what matters the most. So this is the basic structure of how a recursive formula looks. You always call your first term, no longer call it the zero term, you call it the first term. And that's called a sub 1 is equal to the first term. And then you have a sub n is equal to, which is the next term, is take the previous term. That's what x, a sub x minus 1 represents. It represents, it means really the previous term, plus or minus or multiplied by whatever, always greater than uh, n equal. It's always when after the, the second greatest, I'm sorry, after the second term. So here's what I mean. Uh, this first one is explicit. I mean, we know this is linear. We know this is exponential, but again, how do you write these recursively? Here's how you write these recursively. So you take this and you do this nice little squiggly and you recognize what's the first term. You take a sub one is equal to the first term is two. Then we gotta find, how do you find the next term? Well, you take the previous term, which is a sub uh, x minus one. This again means take the previous term. And what do I do to the previous term? Well, I added three to it, okay? And this is for all terms of where x is greater than 2, all right? I'm not going to be crazy about this right now, but I do care that you recognize how to do this because this means take the previous term, add 3 to it, that's how you get the next one. Now, this is handy for computer programming when we don't have linear formats um, or exponential formats, but sometimes there are rules that are only explained recursively, and that's how I'll explain when I get to this one in just a minute. Now, over here. So, again, you take things. So, we're on term 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If I want to find a sub 6, I take the previous term, and according to this rule, I take the previous term, add 3 to it, so now I know this is 17. Now, this is the recursive format, the explicit format, right now just, the explicit format is obviously f of x equals, uh, we're taking, um, what is it, da, 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 da. we're taking uh, 3x, right, and we're taking minus 1 because the first term is one and we got two, right? So if I got two, that means I do three times one minus one. So let's do this again. The second term is five. Remember, this is called your first term, second term, third term, fourth term. What, what formula makes this true? Well, this formula makes this work because the first term, three times one is three, minus one is two. Three times two is six, minus one is five. Three times three is nine, minus one is eight, so on and so forth. We use this to find any number of terms. Like if I want to find the hundredth term, I just put hundred in place of x, and I solve it very easy. Whereas this, I have to actually go forward and find all these terms to find the next term. Now you'll see why we have to know both. All right. So again, recursive, explicit. Down here, uh, let's do this one right now. So this one says I want to find the recursive format. Remember, this is always the first term, second term, so on and so forth. All right. The a sub 1 term, our first term, is equal to 4. To find our next term, all we do is we take the previous term, that is the a, a sub x minus 1, and what's happening every time? I'm just multiplying by 2, or as greater than 2, because this format works for anything after the second term. All right? Now, again, take the previous term, add, multiply by 2 by it, I get 8. If I want to find this term, take the previous term, Multiply by 2, get the next term, so on and so forth. So, take the previous term. If I want to find this term right here, multiply by 2, we get uh, 128. Now, again, we do know this is exponential, okay? So, I know the explicit format for this, all right? I want you guys to get familiar with this language. The explicit formula would be f of x equals, now again, this is considered the first term, second term, third term, fourth term, so on and so forth. It's not the zero term. So here's where this gets a little funky, like we went over, like we went over yesterday. Um, our initial term is uh, the a. We're going to have uh, 4 times 2, because there's our growth factor, to the power of x minus 1. There's the explicit format. This is why it's necessary to know when to mess with the exponent, because this is still our initial term, if you will, because it's the first one. Let's make sure this works. So when I have the first term, because this is considered the first term, I got to get 4. 1 minus 1 is 0, 2 to the power of 0 is 1, 1 times 4 is 4. 2 minus 1 is 1, 2 to the power of 1 is 1, 4 times 2 is 8. It works. Fantastic. 
down here. Now I have an explicit format, and I want us to write the recursive rule for it. So, again, our first term, oops, sorry, the girls are, sorry about that. Okay, so anyway, uh, right here, we got this going on right now, and uh, I gotta take an explicit formula and write it as a recursive formula. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create my little table of, of numbers to recognize how this works. Remember, it's always the first term, not the zero term. That's what's different right now, three, and we'll just stop here at four. So at the first term, one times four is four, plus two is six, constantly go up by four, this is 10, 14, 18. So now I gotta write this recursively, okay? What's our first term? A of one, a sub one is equal to six. To find the next term, all we do is take the previous term, a sub x minus one, oops, a sub x minus one, and we're simply adding four to it because we are using a, we are recognizing a linear function here. And I can see that this works. If I want to find the second term, take the previous term, add four to it, boom. So this explicit formula, here's the recursive formula. Now we got something over here, okay? So this is only gonna be explained recursively. Now you're not gonna see this one today, but you will see one of these in the future. So let's make sure we understand why some formulas can only be recognized recursively, okay? So here we go. Uh, look for the pattern on this one. And this is a very famous pattern. It's called the Fibonacci sequence. And I can see that the only way to get this, to get this term right here, one plus one is two. To get this next term, two plus one is three. To get the next term, three plus two is five, so on and so forth. So in this case, we're using the two previous outcomes or um, the two previous terms to find the next term. So here's how you would do this one. And you're gonna look for different types of patterns in math all the time, okay? F of X, all right? We have actually two terms. I have A sub one equals one. I have A sub two equals one. And to find my next term, because I used the two previous terms in order to find this. To find my next term, I took a sub n, sorry, a sub, um, so let's call it x. We've been calling it x. doesn't matter what you call it. a sub x minus 2 plus a sub x minus 1. That's how you find your next term. So it's literally take your second previous plus your previous to get your next one. And this is for after n is greater than three. Okay, your third term, after your third term. Again, I'm not stressing this right now, I'm just stressing this. We take our previous term, our second previous term, add it to our first previous term, one plus one is two. Take, to find our next term, take our second previous, add it to our first previous, and then we get that one. And that's how the pattern follows the whole way through. Again, this is all about formatting, take your time, ask questions, practice. I'll see you guys in class.